Hey plant friends, so I regret to inform you that I must interrupt your regularly scheduled viewing today to make an announcement. I noticed yesterday that we hit the 100 subscriber milestone and what that means is that it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for these adorable little butterflies that I made. So, the winner of the giveaway is Danny Ryan. So, Danny, if you could please shoot me a DM on Instagram so that we can work out where you would like these little beauties shipped, that would be awesome. Now, back to your regularly scheduled video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel where plant friends do what plant friends do. My name is Darylin. And this is Plant Friend Down the Street. Hey, plant friends. So I've been popping around to different places on the internet lands recently, and my philodendrons have been coming up a lot. A lot of people have been complimenting me on how they look and asking me how I take care of them and what my soil mixture is like. So today I thought that it would be really nice to just get answers to all those questions into one place. And so I hereby present for your viewing pleasure a very specific soil mixture for literally one kind of plant. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed all of the materials that I like to use in my soil. I have to give credit to the person who inspired me to start using this mix. Her name is Kiri, and you can find her on Instagram at plants are forever. She posted a version of this soil mixture on her Instagram a couple of months ago. Go check out her Instagram. She has amazing plants and sometimes she sells stuff and it's usually at a really, really good price. So she's a great follow. Go check her out. Since this is kind of more of a care oriented video, it might be a little bit longer than usual because I really wanna get all of the information out there for you guys. So I am going to go ahead and put the timestamps of which part of the video talks about what right here for you. So go ahead and feel free to skip forward if you just wanna get to the meat of the video or a certain aspect of it and you don't feel like you need all the background info. This soil mixture is designed very, very specifically for philodendrons with very, very fine roots. So you're talking about your splendids, your melanochrysum, varicosum, philodendron alchaco red, philodendron majestic, philodendron gloriosum, any of those binding or crawling philodendrons that have really, really fine roots, like thinner in diameter than spaghetti. These are the types of plants that are exactly what I have had tried and true success with this soil mixture. So if you've been having issues with any of those plants not doing as well as you think that they might be doing, it could be down to a number of reasons and this soil mixture could potentially fix that for you. So I have here today this beautiful philodendron splendid. And as you can see, it's a pretty mature plant. It's really gorgeous and I was really pleased to get it. But when I went and picked it up, I did notice that it is unfortunately a bit of a rehab. We've got quite a bit of browning and yellow spots on the leaves, maybe some pest damage here, yellowing around the edge of the leaf. We've even got something similar going on up here. So when I brought it home, the first thing that I did was take a look at it and go, hmm, all right, this doesn't seem to be a super happy plant. What are we dealing with here? And because I have experience with my other philodendron splendid that's doing really, really well, a couple of things jumped out to me. Firstly, I'm betting that this pot is way too big for this plant. These kinds of vining philodendrons with their teeny, teeny fine spaghetti roots are really vulnerable to having a difficult time in pots that are too large. And this is because when you water a plant and it's in a pot that's too large, the moisture just doesn't ha really have anywhere to go because the roots are not going to be sucking it up. And yes, this pot does have drainage, but it's still not gonna be enough. These plants don't like to be oversaturated. Their roots are really not big enough and hardy enough to be completely oversaturated and drenched. So when I went ahead and watered this plant when I brought it home because I noticed the soil was super, super dry, almost immediately the plant started gutating out of its leaves. 
excessively. If you're newer to the hobby and you've never heard the word gutation, all that refers to is the process where the plant is absorbing too much water through its roots, so it's trying to excrete some through its leaves. For the most part, this is a really normal process and it's not something that you generally have to be too, too worried about. You'll see little droplets forming on the ends of the leaves of your plants all the time and, and the plant's perfectly fine. But for these kinds of philodendrons, especially varicosum hybrids, varicosum have really, really thin leaves and the Splendid is no exception. It, it definitely has thin leaves. When the plant is gutating excessively over and over and over again, it starts to damage the leaves. It can lead to things like edema where the plant is trying to excrete the water really, really quickly over and over again. And then the cell walls actually burst. And then you start to get damage that almost looks like the plant version of flesh eating bacteria. It's not good. It's like black and like looks melted. On this plant, we're not at that point. And so I think that we can do a a lot to help her out and fix this. I noticed that in addition to the pot being way too big, the soil is way too heavy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take her out and kind of assess the damage and see what the root ball looks like. And then we are going to repot her into my soil mixture that I like to use. All right, so before we get into the soil mixture, let's take this splendid out of this pot and take a look at what we're dealing with. Okay, so I've got a bowl for the soil. I'm a little bit afraid, you guys. All right, let's get her out of here. Take this opportunity to just kind of show you the plant a little bit more. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful plant. We're gonna get y'all fixed up, honey, okay? I promise. So I do have a trowel, but I think it's just gonna be too big for this operation. So I actually like to use a spoon when I need a trowel, but it's just gonna be too big. So I'm gonna loosen up this soil in here. The fact that it didn't just kind of fall right out to me is not a great sign. I'm a little bit concerned that some of this soil might be oh compacted. Yeah, maybe it, oh. this, this, yeah. Unfortunately, this soil mixture is just way too heavy for this plant. There is a huge chunk of compacted soil in the bottom of this pot and a whole bunch of roots are stuck in it. So it looks like this plant is in a quote unquote typical chunky aeroid mix. It looks like all that's in here is orchid bark, potting soil, a little bit of maybe cocoa chips and then perlite. It's a very heavy mix. Oh, there's so many broken roots. There's a lot of chunks that are all stuck together so okay so here this is the root ball oh no yeah i have a feeling this is gonna be just carnage oh my god yeah it's all coming from two nodes okay so looks like there's up to two more nodes that we could conceivably start to root there's probably so many roots in here that broke off this is so much soil oh my god okay so I'm gonna try and kind of gently release as much soil from the root ball as possible. Fortunately, it doesn't look like we've got any rot, so that's good. All right, so that root ball is pretty healthy. I like to see my plants rooted at more nodes than this. The predominance of this root ball is Oh no, this root ball is coming almost entirely from one node. That is not the best, um, especially for a plant when you're wanting it to size up. This is a pretty big plant. You're gonna wanna give it as many opportunities as possible to have more places for it to root. It looks like it was on the moss pole and then it dug into the moss pole and all the roots that were on the moss pole dried out. So um, looking at this root ball, I actually kind of think that the pot wasn't too big. It's just 
the soil was way too heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out the pot and I'm going to put it back in the pot, but I don't know that I'm going to fill it up all the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and I am going to wrap a little bit of sphagnum moss around as many nodes that I can fit into the pot as possible. And then we're going to go ahead and mix up our soil. I'm just going to throw this away. This is not the right mix for this plant. So I will be right back. Side note, why is it that I'm always repotting in a white shirt? Like this is a bad choice on my part. <laughs> okay, so that nasty mix is gone. I have another bowl where we are going to start mixing up the mix where she's going to have her new home. So my mix is primarily tree fern fiber. This is because these vining philodendrons that have these really, really fine roots, they need something fluffy that they can root through without getting squished, without getting obstructed, that gets a little bit better airflow. So we're gonna go ahead and use tree fern. This mix is gonna be primarily tree fern. We are also going to be adding a little bit of soil. Like I said earlier, we're going to be adding some orchid bark, which I have here. We're going to be adding perlite, which I have some right here and I've already gone ahead and pre-rinsed it. It's really, really important that you rinse your perlite because perlite is a type of superheated like puffed rock and there's a lot of dust in the perlite bag. And what happens when you have rock dust and then you get it wet and then you let it dry out? Well, it kind of becomes like cement in a way. So that is one of the reasons why your soil will compact if you have a lot of unrinsed perlite in it. As you water and dry out and water and dry out and water and dry out over time, the perlite dust all kind of settles and becomes this brick. And it's very bad for your plant. I had an issue with my melanocrysum getting edema because it was in a really shitty mix that I did a terrible job on. So. Rinse your perlite, friends. Rinse your perlite. We're also gonna add some horticultural charcoal because it has antimicrobial properties and it's also chunky, but it's a very small chunk. And I think that that's good for these really fine roots. And then last but not least, I always add a little bit of worm castings. It's just my preferred organic compound fertilizer. So you're gonna want your mix to be primarily tree fern. And since I am gonna go ahead and use the same pot because the plant does actually have pretty impressive roots, especially considering it's only rooted at that one node. I have this pot for reference. So I'm gonna put in a lot of tree fern fiber. And then once you have your tree fern fiber in your bowl, I'll show you, there are gonna be some lumps. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run my fingers through it and try and separate out the lumps as best as possible. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. I'm gonna go ahead and add my orchid bark. Now you don't need anywhere near as much orchid bark when you're using this tree fern heavy mix because the main ingredient in the substrate is so much fluffier. You don't need as many chunky bits to kind of keep the soil separated, but I do find it to still be beneficial. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add rinsed perlite. So I'll just give you a little glimpse really quick about how much perlite's in there. You can definitely see it, but it's not overly, overly perlite heavy. And then we're gonna add our horticultural charcoal. You don't need a ton of this, but because this is a lot of soil, I'm gonna just sprinkle it in. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully it's not dreadfully loud, but my air purifier did just come on. So bear with me on that front. I'm gonna add some worm castings. This is kind of a lot of soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a big heaping tablespoon. And then I'm actually gonna just top it off a little bit more. I don't wanna have to repot this plant again for a while. So we're gonna give it a nice nutritious mix. Okay, so I think that's nice and mixed. 
Last, we are gonna add our soil. I do like to add a little bit. That is optional, but for me, because my humidity tends to stay a bit lower, I find adding the soil to be helpful. So this is just regular old miracle Grow indoor potting mix. I don't think that's what I'm gonna choose going forward when I have to buy soil again, but I do have a lot of it left, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. It's kind of up to you how much soil you wanna add, more soil for lower humidity, less soil for higher humidity. I just like to be able to feel that it can be kind of like a binding agent for all of the different components. I put in a couple of tablespoons. I'm gonna put in a little bit more. But at the end of the day, you really want to feel the mix as mostly tree fern. And the tree fern's very obvious when you feel the soil because it's kind of pokey. <laughs> It feels like very small, fine sticks. So it's very obvious when you're feeling it. Um, and that's what you want. The preponderance of the soil mixture to be is that tree fern. I'm looking at this and this is honestly a little... I think I might add a bit more tree fern to this, to be quite honest. It is a little tricky because once the tree fern lumps kind of get worked out, there's a lot of really fine tree fern particulates that kind of feel like soil, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Besides, I don't think this is quite enough. Okay, so this is where we are. And honestly, it just looks like soil, but it's really, really, really fluffy and light and it's nice and chunky. And this is gonna be really great for those really, really fine roots. Let me give you as much of a close up on the root ball as I can before we move on to potting up the plant. See how fine those roots are? This one right here is really thick, but it's still, you know, spaghetti very very fine so I think this plant is gonna be a lot happier in her new home with her new mix so I'm gonna actually lay her down I'm gonna go rinse out this pot because it is full of just compacted nastiness and I'm gonna rinse out the saucer as well and I'll be right back okay so I am back now let's get this beautiful lady potted up this stuff is so fluffy, just those like three little scoops. It's already about a third of the way up the pot. All right, let's see. I want to pot this back in here a little bit deeper than it was previously because I want more nodes to go under the soil. So I'm going to position it. I am going to get some spag really quick. Sphagnum moss, plant lady hot sauce, put that shit on everything. Okay, back. Got some sphagnum moss. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour a little water on it. Ordinarily, I don't really add sphagnum moss to my soil mixtures, but in this case, I think that the sphagnum moss is gonna give these other nodes a better chance of starting to root than if I just put them into the soil. So I am gonna go ahead and just kind of cradle the nodes in sphagnum moss. It's a little bit too much, to be honest. I don't want a ton of sphagnum moss in this mix. It's just not designed for that. There are other versions of mixes that are really successful with these types of philodendrons that are more sphagnum moss based. They are called like a dirty spag, but I don't really use those and I'm not really particularly familiar with them. So I'm not gonna go into that, but if you guys are interested in potentially a dirty spag rather than a tree fern mix, tree fern is a little bit expensive and it can be hard to find. You have to make sure that you're getting 
a sustainably certified product. So this brand, this New Zealand Fernwood is certified sustainable. And also a lot of times you have to get it at a pet store and it is expensive. So no shade. If you don't want to use tree fern, you can also do a version of this that uses sphagnum moss, but I'm just not the right person to tell you how to do that. And naturally I have undermixed this a little, but that's okay. We'll just put a little bit of spag around the node on top. And I just need to make sure that I keep this moist so that if it does start putting out more roots, they don't dry up. And then once I'm satisfied with how they look, I'll just go ahead and add some more soil so that they can get integrated with the rest of the root ball. So now we're, I think we're in a much better position with this plant. Instead of having one node that has roots in the soil, we've got three. I think that's just going to give this plant a much better foundation. I did undermix the soil a little, but that's okay. I can add more later. All the things that matter are in the soil. So I am, I think, going to go ahead. It's not that I have anything against moss poles. It's just that with a base this thick, that's just going to displace a lot of roots and a lot of soil. Whatever. Fuck it. We're just going to use it. Okay, so now we've got this plant back in its pot in a much better, much more well-suited mix. We've got it back on its moss pole. And so it is really unfortunate that the plant had so much root that just was wasted by having it on this pole and then not keeping up on misting it. And the thing with moss poles is that you really got to make a choice. You really got to go all in on keeping them moist or don't miss them at all. Don't keep them wet at all because the plant will grab onto the moss even if it's not wet. But if you keep it wet and then it dries out, the roots will dry out and can die. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave the moss pole. I'm not going to wet it, but I'm going to go ahead and water this now. And because it is the first watering, I am going to try and make sure that I saturate the soil. So that is just about it for that. Hopefully this girl does a lot better going forward. Hopefully I don't see the excessive gutation anymore. And that should help with a lot of these yellow spots and the browning on some of these leaves. I did actually go ahead and treat it with copper fungicide just in case it was a fungal thing and an alcohol and soap mixture in case it was a bacterial thing. So cross your fingers, I think she's gonna do really well. Every other plant that I have in this mix has done really, really well. So that wraps it up for this. I'm actually gonna take you into the other room right now and show you some of the plants that I've been using the soil mixture for so you can get an idea of my results. That way, if you like my results, you can decide whether or not you want to try this mix. See you in a second. Okay, we are back in my room and oh, look who it is. It's little Miss Pippa. As you can see, she has a little boo-boo, but she's okay. She loves these greenies. Here you go, baby. You want that? Good girl. You say hi. Say hi, everybody. Here you go. Good girl. All right, well, she's gonna enjoy her treat and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a couple of philodendrons that I've got in that tree fern mix so you can see how they have done. Okay, so we're over here at the plant shelf and there's two plants on this shelf that I wanna show you that have been in the mix and I think have done really well. So the first one is this philodendron El Choco Red. I know it doesn't look like much right now where it's at, but that's because I did take a cutting from it and the leaf that I cut off of this plant was absolutely stunning. I'd say that this is a pretty good success. The next plant on this shelf that I have in the tree fern mix is this Philodendron Gloriosum. And I put it into the mix and it immediately started sizing up. And so this is the first leaf that really shows how well it's been doing. This was the leaf before it. And as you can see, it's really small. And then I got this one and it is also now working on another leaf. So let me give you a little close up. 
So this is the Gloriosum that is in the tree fern mix. It's doing really, really well. There is a little discoloration here because that was my fault. I forgot to water it. But other than that, the plant is thriving. And we've got another new leaf coming in right there. And I just love Gloriosum. I can't wait until this one sizes up and gets really big. But she's in the mix. As you can see, look at all that tree fern. And she is loving it. Okay, over here by my dresser, there is one more plant that I want to show you. It is my original Splendid that I mentioned earlier. And she is right here in this white geometric pot. You can see her. She's gotten so big, but she's done really, really, really well. And let me turn the camera around and I'll show you the difference between how she's been doing in this tree fern mix versus how that other Splendid was doing in that super heavy soil mixture. Okay, here she is. And as you can see, her leaves are really, really, really pretty and almost perfect. Have a little bit of crisping tips, but that's my fault for not watering. This is the original leaf that this plant had when I got it, and it's actually not doing too bad. You can see the tree fern mix there. And this plant has just gotten bigger and bigger and grown so fast. So you can see this leaf and then this leaf over here. They're all super dark, almost entirely flawless. Look at this big, big baby leaf. And then there's this big baby leaf. And then she's already got another one that she just put out. So, so you can see, She's doing really well, looks really nice, doesn't have any of the issues with gutation and damage from the gutation that the other plant had. So this plant is doing just fine thriving and humidity in the low 60s, high 50s, no issues pushing out leaves, no issues with any damage from gutation, bacterial spots, anything like that. And I really think that the tree fern mix is the secret sauce here, that and also pH balancing water. You can see that the plant has started to get bigger. So that is kind of the results that I've been getting with this mix. And if you like that and would like to replicate it, try the tree fern. Okay, plant friends. So that is going to be it for today. I'm so glad that you guys were able to come hang out with me and chill with me for a while. I really hope that this video was helpful. And if so, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you have a tried and true soil mixture that you swear by, go ahead and let us know that down below in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to join our little family, please do, please leave a comment. Other than that, if you could go ahead and give this video a like and leave a comment below just for fun, it really helps me out. I've noticed that some of my videos have got way more views than I have subscribers. And I think it's because those are the ones that got the most comments. So if you could go ahead and help me out on that front, that would be amazing. Once again, thanks for chilling with me. Say bye -bye. Just little girl says bye bye. Plants in love y'all, plants in love. Bye.